All right, um, if you're new to the channel, please like the video. Get me them, what's it called? Fucking algorithm points. <laughs> um, all right, check it out. So this is r slash um, relationships, user throw ra 94583409 h for hotel um my 20 male social anxiety ended my relationship and made her 19 female start using tinder again only a week after she asked if i wanted to be in a relationship with her okay here's the quick skinny um oh god it's a long ass post um so look this video is going to be to the op if you want to um see the details i'm going to put the link to this post in the description look um, this is to the OP first of all man just by reading it it seems to me that you don't know what you're doing and that's okay <laughs> that's okay man that's okay because nobody knows what they're doing like if you look at the divorce rate if you look at the crime rate if you look at the you know the everybody's fucked even before coronavirus right um, no one really knows what they're doing. They just operate on the momentum of their past and their knowledge of history, you know, and their research into life, life experience, doing actual research, etc. So <clears throat> look, the only way to get good at something is to do it, okay? And it seems to me that you have this maybe expectation that you should be the best at this. When the truth is... Um, you can't be blamed for being a bloke in your position and making that mistake. Um, first of all, I have social anxiety and I get pretty nervous talking to new people, especially girls. My girlfriend was the same. She was really bad at keeping a conversation going. That's pretty common. Um, it's one of the reasons that men are in general funnier than women. It's an evolutionary thing where women don't have to be funny. Women have to be present. <laughs> Some guy will pick them up, right? They can have a baby. Um, so they get into their genes, get into the next generation. Um, she was really bad at keeping the conversation going. Well, at least there you acknowledge it. Like the problem there is that the responsibility for the conversation and interpersonal engagement is on you. And that's not good. That's not good, right? It needs to be on both of you. We met on Tinder and chatted for a couple of days. We both had somewhat similar interests. We both liked video games, etc. It went well, connected, and then you made a list of things to talk about. <clears throat> it helped me calm down, and whenever I ran out of things to say, I just looked at the list. At the time, I thought this was smart, but now I see it was the equivalent of cheating on a test. Sort of. Sort of. Okay? The reason they say fake it till you make it is because people that make it just faked it. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Like, you think about a guy that goes through Navy SEAL school. How many times is that man going to fail? go through buds training he's going to fail you're going to fail all the time you think about a guy that becomes a ufc fighter how many times has he failed to get there he missed the kick that came from his head or you know the navy seal guy you know misses the target the first hundred times right and then bang he gets it so making a list is actually a really good idea when you're starting out in the um uh social uh what's it called the kind of Tinder Bumble uh, world, right? It's because what happens is you look at the list and then eventually when you talk, like, dude, I use the same jokes like a dozen times a day just with different people. And if I'm walking around with my girlfriend, <laughs> she will hear the same dumb jokes of me just telling these dumb jokes to people. She's like, oh, because I use the same jokes because they're funny because they catch, right? And she gets annoyed, but I don't care because fuck it, I made someone laugh. So having a list is not actually a bad thing. I, I see your point in that relying on that list is a bad thing, but the only way to commit something to memory and to get good at something and then rinse and repeat is to start slowly, which is what you've done. Um, we talked again later and the list hadn't run out. When she came to visit me for two days, I actually planned activities so there wouldn't be a lot of moments where we just had to talk without doing anything. Even then I had a list of things on my phone so when there was some downtime I looked at it to get some inspiration look I'm going to give you some of the best advice that I've ever read it was I read it 
I can't remember who said it, and it was this. <clears throat> it is a good thing to be in the in the. It is a good thing for a man to be in the presence of a woman with whom he can be exhilarated. But it is better for a man to be in the presence of a woman with whom he can relax. Dude, that blew my mind and it fucking changed my life because I was always interested in um, entertaining but the problem is if you're going to be in a relationship with someone the truth is that a relationship is this I'm doing the mundane shit they're doing the mundane shit let's do the mundane shit together that's all it is like life is just mundane and monotonous and boring sometimes it's not all exhilarating we have to go to the toilet. We have to go shopping. We have to go to work. We have to send emails and receive emails and pay our taxes and our insurance and our registration, etc. You know, we, we have to have hard conversations with our partner. And it seems to me that you are about to learn a very valuable lesson about what you don't want in a relationship, okay? Because what I've noticed in life is that people don't know what they don't want till they get it. Right. But and you have gotten something that you're sitting here going, you know, um, I've got social anxiety, got into relationships or wrote a list of things, and then you couldn't come up with some shit to say. I guarantee you this, man, as you get older, you're only 20. 20's not old. 20's young as a fucking baby duck, sir. And so what will happen is that you will learn more, you will fail more. Dude, I've slept with dozens of women, I've dated you know, maybe a bit less than that. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to give you context. I was really bad with women when I was even a young man at 22, right? And it took me a lot of failing, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of tears, my own tears and their tears for me to learn how, first of all, how to be a man, how to be a man, how to tell the truth to myself, how to not lie to someone else because I was trying to convince them that I was someone, but I was really trying to convince myself that I'm someone and I want them to believe me, <laughs> right? So you will learn how to be a better you, right? How to do you better. You will learn that. And then you will become the man that the woman you want needs, okay? Every man is the man he is and every woman is the woman she is, but not every man is the man he needs to be to get the woman he wants to get, Okay. If I was in your position right now, I would learn from this. I would like uh, take some of my advice, like just that general advice. Um, now, look, about the fact that a week later she started using Tinder again, here's what that tells me. What that tells me is that she wasn't interested in you. She was interested in you being interested in her. She wanted the attention. She wanted the camera on her, not to be the camera on you, okay? Okay. And with my relationship, I'm the camera and she's the camera. I see her. I, I give her attention. And then she does it for me, right? Me and my missus have something called listening time, right? And in listening time, I speak and she can't say a goddamn thing because it's my turn to speak. I can pause for as long as I need to to collect my thoughts and she doesn't interrupt me. And then I say, okay, your turn. I pass the baton to her. And then she does the same thing. And she can spend, I don't care, she spends 10 minutes silent. I'll just sit there and vape because that's what I do because cigarettes are dumb, expensive in my country. I digress. Um, so what happens is that we have listening time and we both get heard. We both get listened to. And that is just fucking maintenance in the engine of the relationship, okay? So this girl going on Tinder, she's met you on Tinder. She's like, ooh, Here's a dopamine rush. Talking to the next guy. Here's a dopamine rush. Here's a dopamine rush. That's all it is. She's using you as the drug for her brain. Maybe it's because she hasn't, like she's 19. She doesn't know what the fuck she wants. Maybe she doesn't have a good relationship with her dad. Maybe she's been abused in the past. Maybe she doesn't know how to understand men. You know, she clearly doesn't have her, her shit together emotionally. So don't blame yourself too hard. Now, having said that, you're not innocent, right? Like both of you are just as broken as each other. And so am I. Just remember that, man. None of us have got this shit worked out, right? But just keep in mind that you are not completely at fault. You've already explained the fact, and I can see just from the evidence, if this story is true, that you were put in the position of entertaining and in a sense courting this young lady. 
And she put herself in the position of being courted. And she gave you the opportunity to get inside her pants or inside her heart or inside her, you know, mouth. Inside, is that? Anyway. So that was my version of kissing. Anyway, don't ask my girlfriend about it. So um, she'd been talking to this guy who was now her boyfriend for quite a while now, like three weeks. I know this since I saw him coming, commenting on her Insta post back then. It's been one month now since she asked if, if we were in a relationship. So most of the time she was talking to this guy and many others. Okay, so you just got the wrong girl. You just got a lemon, right? But having said that, you were the wrong guy. Number one, because you picked the wrong girl. Number two, because you you haven't worked out your social anxiety yet, which is able to be overcome, 100%, 100%. But the way to do it is uh, probably via exposure therapy. Get on Tinder, man, and just fucking date and talk and talk and date and talk and talk. Ask questions, ask questions. That's all you do, okay? Ask questions. Say funny things and if they fall flat, learn from it. Dude, I've offended so many people. <laughs> <laughs> because I've just gone for the joke and it's missed the mark, right? I remember, so on my Tinder profile, I put this. You can put this if you want. Um, if we match, let's talk like 90s kids on the phone. We'll exchange numbers and we'll talk like 90s kids on the phone because I'm 32 right now, so I was brought up in the 90s, right? Um, and that, that, that gets me tons of hits, right? Like it got me tons of hits. And then um, with my current girlfriend who I met on Bumble, um, I just made her laugh all the time. She was just giggling like a fucking schoolgirl at work. And she told me that, right? But I had to go through a whole lot of problems and issues and offensive situations and, you know, feeling like shit because I didn't know how to land a joke. I didn't know how to talk to women. I didn't know X, Y, Z, right? And so it's just a matter of risking it to get the biscuit. Yeah, that works. Fuck it. So... Okay, now I'm going to address the bottom of your post. So my questions are, <clears throat> how do you guys feel about her using Tinder again when we were in a relationship? Very bad. She shouldn't have done that. It's all about her. It's all about her. That Man, this relationship, it's all about her. And she's 19. She's, you know, Generation Z, as you are. So I don't blame her for not understanding that being self-centered doesn't get you anywhere, right? Um. I've heard that it's okay and that I should have talked to her, to her about Tinder early into the relationship to set the boundaries. Look, that's fair. It's always good to set boundaries early in the relationship. But at the same time, you don't want to scare someone off by saying, get off Tinder. No more Tinder. X, Y, Z. Here are the rules, right? You don't want to say that because she'll be like, all right, fuck it, I'm out. But having said that, if you were to say, why do you still have Tinder on your phone? And she doesn't have the right answer. Well, there's your answer, man. You, you've got to have the courage to get out of the relationship because this this chick's, you know, lowballing you. Um, how can I stop being so nervous and how do I make my social anxiety go away? And is it difficult? Any other thoughts on my relationship? Okay, in regards to your social anxiety, Winston Churchill had a great quote and it is this. The only way around is through, okay? You have to face up to why you have social anxiety. And it's probably because you don't think you are enough. I'm gonna tell you this much, son. You are enough, but not for some people. And that's fine. I'm not enough for some people. I'm not enough for the, you know, however many girls that said no to me. But they weren't enough for when I said no to them. And that's fine. Because two things, three things come out of that. Number one, you learn. Number two, you become enough. Number three, you pick someone that is enough, right? That's that's all it is. So I'm also not sure whether it was my social anxiety and a lack of confidence that is at fault for us not being able to click or if we were just not going to click anyways. I'm going to be honest with you, man. You weren't going to click anyways because this girl didn't have your best interests at heart. She had her best interests at heart. It's simply obvious, right, from the behavior. We still did have a lot of good conversations when I used my list, but a lot of times it felt like I needed to do all the work and make the conversations enjoyable, even after we had known each other for a couple of weeks and had met up. She also rarely asked me any questions except how's your day been and other simple questions like that. Maybe it was a combination of both. Look, I'm going to be honest with you, dude. There's a lot of chicks that skate by and end up in marriages they hate, but they lie about hating them because they're super hot. They are dumb as a brick. And uh, they meet a guy that's also dumb as a brick, but he's 
abstract or he's got cash or whatever it is that the evolutionary mark picks for her. Um, and then they end up in marriages that they hate, right? Because they don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to self, self-analyze. They don't know how to be self-aware. They don't know how to negotiate. You know, it's just fucked. It's chaos, right? So if I was in your position, um, I would start doing some work on yourself. Don't worry about girls just yet. Here's what I would do. Read books of men, specifically men that you admire. Read Jordan Peterson, right? Now, a lot of people that watch this video are going to be like, oh, I'm fucking his right wing. I don't care about his politics. I care about his psychoanalysis of young people, right? Especially men. Um, there is a place in this world for you, my friend. There is. But you have to make that space. And you will make that space when you believe in yourself. And believing in yourself will come when you have done the work. There's no point having self-esteem if you haven't done anything to earn it, okay? So I would work on myself if I was you. You know, go to the gym, start working out. It could be one day a week, who cares, right? Um, Start eating healthy, start reading books, start educating yourself, make yourself wise. I'm very knowledgeable of history. I'm very knowledgeable of current world politics. I'm very knowledgeable about the industry that I'm in, which is the security industry, right? And so become knowledgeable. You're 20 years old, dude. I don't hold any of this stuff that you're talking about against you. I don't hold any of this against her either. It just turns out that she's a bit of a beanbag and you got caught, right? So look, you will push through this. You will succeed if you put the work in and don't ever, 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 ever give up. Don't ever give up. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Dude, I've been so depressed sometimes. I've had several bouts of suicidal ideation and now I find myself a week into just having moved into a into the house with a girl that I fucking adore. I fucking adore her. She's the baddest motherfucker around, right? But that shit didn't come easy. It didn't come easy. Look, man, I wish you the best. I hope this video helps. Watch it as many times as you want. Please like the video. Um, subscribe if you like. Look, it helps me, but you do what you need to, man. Good luck.